In the last movie, you learned how to turn mesh objects into 3ds Max primitives using Primitive Maker by Garp. The workflow you learned about is session based though, so a restart of 3ds Max would leave you without the UD components option. In order to make the new primitives a permanent feature, you need to understand how Primitive Maker operates. When you used the tool in the last movie, you specified folders and primitive names to be stored on the hard drive. Primitive Maker created a subfolder based on the category name you specified, which doubles up as a label in the creation list. Inside of that subfolder, Primitive Maker created a number of .ms files, which are actually plugins that store mesh object information. If you were to open any of these files in the text editor, you can see how it is storing information related to its structure from object name, category, vertex position, and face IDs, among others. Since these script files are actual plugins, all you need to do to make them permanent is to store them where they can auto-load. Select all .ms files you created in that folder and copy them to memory. Go to your 3ds Max installation folder, usually under Program Files, Autodesk, 3ds Max 2014 in this case, and go to the Plugins subfolder. Paste the UD primitives there. Any plugin in this folder will load at launch time. Restart 3ds Max and verify that you indeed have access to the new primitives. Create a few to see that they indeed react as designed. What you also need to remember though, is that those scene primitives are dependent on the plugins you stored in the 3ds Max install directory. This means that trying to open this scene on a different system that doesn't have the MS files will result in an error. So, you either need to transfer the MS files as well, or you need to collapse the primitives to simple mesh objects. Open the last city block scene you saved to disk, or the file named cityblocksudlink.max you downloaded for this tutorial. You can see all the urban design components in place and convert it to mesh objects. However, they are not currently parented to the rows infrastructure. You need those links in place if you are to duplicate the city block later on. Linking objects is easy enough to do in 3ds Max but you need to be careful not to mess up any existing hierarchies. Remember that there is a set hierarchy between light poles, traffic lights, and trash cans. Therefore, it's safer to process the parenting using the Select from Scene dialog. Make sure nothing is selected in the viewport, and then press H to access the Select from Scene dialog. In the Select menu, make sure the Select Children option is not selected. Click and drag to select all objects starting with the UDC prefix. If you're wondering why you are not using the find box as you did before, that's because the find box select all objects in a hierarchy. That would have included objects like traffic lights, flaps, and trash cans. Selecting them as you did with a click and drag only selects the topmost parents, which is what you need in this case. The fact that they are sharing the same prefix still makes them easy enough to select in the dialog. Click OK to confirm the selection, and then use the Link tool to link them to the rows infrastructure. From that point on, you have a hierarchy that you can work with, and that you can easily duplicate. Selecting the whole city block is as easy as double-clicking any part of the roadworks. This wraps up the second installment of this tutorial, but you, on the other hand, still have some work to do. You need to repeat what you have learned here and add UD components to the other two city blocks currently in the scene. When you are done with that, you'll be ready for the third and last installment. 
The third installment, starting with the next movie, deals with creating and placing low polygon buildings to bring the scene to life.